Hey friends, June 1st, we are in the garden. I wanted to do a follow-up on the electric culture video that we did. Um, we've got over 60,000 views on that, a lot of questions. I'm doing my best to answer everybody's questions. And first of all, let me start off by saying I am not an expert on electric culture gardening, guys. I, I learned a little bit from Danny and Wanda at Deep South uh, and Mickey at uh, Hill Mills, uh, Hill Mills. Um, YouTube channel and I figured I'd give it a try. So I've had a lot of comments um, Guys, if you don't have nothing nice to say, just don't say anything at all Just just be uh, be kind. Okay, uh, that's what this channel is all about We're just trying to help people garden. We've been gardening for 30 years. No need to put in any any nasty comments But anyway, let's take a look around and, and we'll kind of compare and see what things done have done we 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 do have some progress that I've noticed in the pots in the grow tables. So let me take you over to some of the tomatoes and we'll show you what's uh, what's going on. And I'll, I'll give you a little garden update as well too. All right, here are our cherry tomatoes. They're about six foot tall. I have been constantly pruning them. Uh, we do have a lot of fruit, as you can see, all over front, back, behind here. So they're doing very well. Uh, I have stopped feeding nitrogen. We've been getting a lot of rain, guys. That's why we're probably getting all the foliage. Uh, and we're using 0 10, 10 now. So calcium and phosphorus. But here is our antenna. Now, I, I have had a lot of great comments from folks that the antenna needs to be a lot taller. It needs to be, you know, two or three foot tall. Um, I will tell you, though, folks, that I have seen a lot of progress this year. Um, so the tomatoes are doing good. Lots of good progress with these tomatoes as well, too. Uh, we, we are seeing a lot of uh, fruit development. Um, and again, they're really healthy. Right there. If you see the, the white granules on the ground, uh, it's Epsom salt for magnesium. So there's another antenna. Again, the plants are doing excellent. We're starting to get some beefsteak tomatoes. Peppers are doing really great. We've got a couple antennas in here, as you can see. Okay, guys, so we have our five gallon grow tables. Um, we've got two Scotch bonnets. Okay, this one has an antenna, and this one does not. Now, I haven't done anything different. I've been treating these plants the same. The same kind of fertilizer. We started with bone meal and blood meal. Guys, that's that's a big difference right there. I mean, I'm not no scientist, but look at the difference between the plants. This one has the antenna, and this one doesn't. Okay, guys, we have two bell pepper plants right here. Now, people are telling me, too, it needs to be on the south side. So uh, this is on the south side. The north is this way, east and west. So east and then behind me west. So you can look at the difference between these two. And that one's healthy, it's been producing a lot. So, wow, look at that. I haven't really noticed a difference along the fence. We do have some antennas uh, along with the cucumbers and beans. As you can see, there's one here. I really can't, really haven't noticed a big difference in these. Okay, yeah, as you can see, we have okra. We have four. Uh, this little one has always struggled. So I went ahead. Oh, we're finally getting some bees. So this one has an antenna to the south of it. And as you can see, it looks a little, little bigger than the rest of them. So maybe there is something to be said. And let's keep looking. I have not seen any difference uh, in the beans. They are growing good. Uh, but I don't I don't really see a difference. They typically grow like this uh, pretty much every year Same with the red hole peas. The only thing I'm noticing a difference in is, is the tomatoes and then the the, uh, the plants in the pots So right here guys, we have three scotch bonnets and these gallon uh, grow pots So we have the first one Second one and the third one now the third one does have an antenna um, it looks a little bit bigger, maybe a little more healthier than the second definitely the first one. They're all getting the same water They're all getting the same feed 
Um, so there is a little bit of a difference there. So I don't know, folks. Um, I wanted to give it a try. Again, I'm not an expert. So when you make comments down the end there, please, um, I'm just trying something new. Um, I wanted to try something new. Now, um, if, if, if you want to learn more, you could probably go to Danny and Wanda's um, channel, Deep South, um, Hills Mills. You can go over there and th he's, he's really good at that as well too. I just wanted to give something a try um, just to have fun. So hopefully this little update uh, is helpful. If you guys want to make more comments, um, I appreciate it. Uh, let's go ahead and just take a look at the rest of the garden. So the Hugo Culture Garden is done amazing, guys. It has proven its theory. Now I have talked about this in the past about Hugo Culture. Um, the Germans brought it to America in hotter climates. We have a lot of German towns here in Texas. I'm gonna get in the shade. What you do is you dig a trench, a couple feet down, you put logs, and then you put st sticks, branches, debris, and then you put uh, compost, and then you put your soil on top of that. So what happens is when you water and you deep soak, those logs act like a sponge, okay? They're gonna hold the water down in there. That's what you need here, especially in Texas or in the hotter climates. Um, even the deserts, you can grow gardens, Arizona, Nevada. This, this method has, has worked. Um, and I did it a horseshoe shaped, as you can see right here. Just wanted to do it a different shape. And guys, look at the stem on this pumpkin and the squash. Look how beautiful and healthy these are. And I have not had any squash bores. Uh, I had tried uh, Miss Lippy's uh, method of taking black pepper and making a paste. And when I were young and first starting out, and I put that around there, and that worked really good. Um, and we used some diatomaceous earth, and uh, then Captain Jack's as well too, you know, organic. Um, and it's done amazing. Let's just take a look at what's growing in the Hugo Culture Garden. Look at that, that big old pumpkin. And then we've got that uh, Native American squash. I had mentioned it in the previous videos. That sucker can get three foot long. It will turn orange. Uh, dotted in here too, we've got some butternut squash. They're doing really well. We've got a big beautiful one right there. We've got a smaller one. And then there's a third one. So I'm really happy about that. Let's go around back. Oh, here's another one of those Native American squashes. We've got a spaghetti squash here and there's more uh, growing. And we've got our yellow squash as well. Looks like a spaghetti squash. Another spaghetti squash. Heck yeah, really excited about it. Last year we had a hard time, guys. It was really hot. We did. We were in a drought. We even had a lot of squash and pumpkin growing out of our compost pile, which was a bonus. Um, and we have another pumpkin. It's kind of fun when you get those volunteer plants. They just come out of your compost or somewhere and um, it's a blessing. Sweet taters are doing good. We had already harvested our regular potatoes. We had a decent one, it wasn't that good, but hey, we're blessed, we'll take it. I'm always checking the soil down here. Don't want it to be soaking wet. We've got mulch and I'm, I'm down there about four inches and it is starting to get a little dry. I might go ahead and just lightly water it. We are supposed to be getting rain uh, here this weekend, which will be nice. I like to harvest the okra when it's about this size. To me, it just tastes better. I don't want to hurt the plant. There we go. That's the perfect size that we like. And what we do, guys, since we're not harvesting a lot at one time, we will eventually, when the plants get bigger, uh, we'll go ahead and put them in a, a Ziploc and put it in the freezer, and then when we have enough, we'll process them. These plants are doing really well. We have one antenna in the middle of everything. Green egg squash. Guys, we're, we're, we're eating a lot of it. I'm processing them too. Another thing I'm doing with the squashes is, I'm, and I'm going to be doing that today, what I'll do is I'll cut them in, in slices, half inch slices, and then I'll go ahead and I'll flour them, I'll egg wash them, and I'll panko breadcrumb them. Put all different kind of seasons in there. Uh, and then I'll put it on a sheet pan on parchment paper and I'll put it in the freezer, quick freeze. 
Um, I'll let it stay in there for about four to six hours, and then I'll pull the vac pack machine out, and they'll be they'll be solid. So they won't squinch up in the vac pack. We'll vac pack them lightly, and then we'll stack them in the freezer. Uh, if you ever want the squash, you pull them out. You could saute them in some oil. You can bake them. They're really good. So you should try that. Let's be careful. Our grow table salad bar is doing really good. Uh, we've been eating a lot of salad. Uh, when they bolt like this, guys, I just pull them out. They're going to be bitter. I don't want to. I don't want to eat that. But yeah, you just come and cut and come again. We have baby bok choys. They're a little, they're a little uh, tired right now because it's hot. But tonight we'll come in and we'll water, water them with these, with these grow tables, these smaller pots. You have to water them in the evening or in the morning. We even planted some lettuce uh, in the soil, guys, on the ground. That pepper's just going nuts. The beautiful lettuce. I'm going to harvest a couple of these. When I harvest these, I just harvest the whole thing. Um, we can go ahead and we, we wash them really well. And then I'll wrap them in paper towels and then put them in a Ziploc. You'll be surprised how, how long they'll last. Look at that. It's amazing. I'll be coming out here tonight and harvest them when it's cooler. More carrots. We, really, we usually don't plant a lot of carrots in the summer, the spring for the summer. And we did a major harvest um, this uh, early, early spring, January, February. We, they grow better in the winter here. But hey, we went ahead and threw some more in. We've got a bunch of carrots that are frozen and canned. Starting to get a lot of cucumbers. We just did a pickling video, the last video. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. Super simple, quick pickle. Love growing vertically on the fence. So we've got different cucumbers. We've got uh, Kentucky Wonder Beans. Everything's doing good. We've got Armenian cucumbers too, guys. I definitely want to show you that when we start harvesting. They grow really good in hot climates. Lots of chamomile flowers. Probably going to come out again. So what we're doing is Miss Rochelle and I, we're, we're picking the flowers. That's the, the best time to pick them. We're picking them. We put them in a bowl and we dry them on a little sheet pan just right out in the kitchen counter. Uh, the smell is just amazing. And once they're fully dried, then we'll put them in a container and you can just take a, a handful of them and you can make a really nice chamomile tea. Very relaxing. Our cha mei Korean melons are really starting to climb. We kind of gave them a little, little training here. These are a very sweet melon. Uh, really like this melon. We discovered this from Hollis and Nancy's web uh, channel. Uh, Miss Nancy made a sorbet. Uh, we did these last year, and I made that sorbet, and Rochelle and I are, were just amazed. No sugar at all, and it was so sweet, so delicious. Let's come around to the other side of the fence and, and see if we got any more cucumbers. Okay, guys, this is the start of an Armenian cucumber. These suckers can get 12 to 24 inches long, and they will curve, but they are really delicious. And they're obviously in, in the melon family. These are doing very well. We've got a lot. I've been used to, I was hand pollinating. Still have not really seeing a lot of bees. We are starting to see some bees. Uh, I think there's an issue with that. I don't know what's going on. I know a lot of people were doing videos on that. I did a video on that too. You can, you can check that video out. Um, look at that crazy Kentucky wonder. Yeah, let it grow up here. Lots of pickles. Gotta get up in there. It's funny, they'll grow like overnight. You'll come out here and then th th it'll be like the whole pickle, like four inches long. Everything's looking good. Okay guys, electric culture update. Believe in it, but don't believe in it. It's up to you. I figured I'd give it a try. It seems to be doing something. I mean, some of the plants, especially on the grow tables uh, that have the antenna, um, look a little bit bigger than the other ones, so Hey, give me your thoughts and your comments. Uh, I want to thank everybody that subscribed. We're almost to 3,000 subscribers, guys. I can't thank you enough. We're having a blast. If we can uh, get a hold of more people, share. Please share our channels. If there's a, a cooking segment that you like, maybe put it on your Facebook. Uh, but really, we're here to help people garden. We want to teach people how to grow their own food, uh, especially nowadays um, with the food pricing and everything. And who knows? It could get worse. Uh, but thanks again, guys. Um, 
we are going to our Old Town Festival this weekend. It's called the Leander uh, Festival. It's gonna be fun. I think we've uh, taken you on that journey before, but every year it's different. Live music, uh, arts and crafts, and all different kinds of vendors, uh, food trucks. Um, so we'll take you that on the weekend. So there's a little update, guys. Thanks, until next time. We'll see you later. God bless.